Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, it has been a while since I have done a Q&A video and uh, I collected some uh, some videos. Uh, I had a question from uh, Otavio uh, about the USB spectrum analyzer, the LTD set 35 and it was about calibration or normalization of the uh, tracking generator. I, let me see. I have it here. It is this one. It's very popular. And uh, he wants to use it to adjust filters. And he just wonders how to calibrate. And uh, let's find out if we can, or at least uh, normalize it. Um, and I have uh, a question. I, I think it's from Russia. The characters I, I cannot really read, but I will try. It's a uh, bink top and uh, it's about the uh, Raushui or the East Tester, the VC4. It's about the LCR meter, the 4090C or the East Tester 4410, I think. And it has a serial connection and a USB connection. And he tried to connect it. He did find the software. I didn't, but he sent me a link. So I've, I have got the software. Uh, let's see if we can, can uh, connect that. And uh, I have a question from uh, Richard. Uh, Richard, uh, he posts his comments in the FA2, but I think he talked about uh, uh, WBSG1, the signal generator, and he had the problem to to set the frequency exactly with the correct steps. So uh, I wonder uh, what that is. We can try that. And then again, from a country that uses other letters, and if I pronounce correct, it was top knot. And uh, top knot uh, ask uh, about the. Uh, so ADF 4351, show me the spectrum, how about the harmonics? So uh, we're going to try that, but uh, not today. So uh, top note, it is coming, but you need to wait for the next Q&A. Um, yeah, let's, let's start with the USB spectrum analyzer and a nice little $35 thing. And uh, let's see if we can normalize it. Okay, I tried to find the setup where you can see both the screen and the spectrum analyzer. Now it's connected there. As you can see, there is some data going on. Here is a button to put the, the blue light is the tracking generator. And uh, we need both connections. And let's go to the screen. Okay, on the screen. I selected my uh, COM3 because it's COM3 in my computer. It's 35 megahertz up to 4.4 gig. And if I do now a single scan, you can see it is drawing its line. And it's receiving nothing, of course, because there is no antenna. There is nothing on the input of the spectrum analyzer. So, so what if we just connect the input and the output and we switch on the tracking generator and we do another scan if i do another scan now you would expect a flat line on zero and as you can see it is not. So it was a fair uh, question of uh, Otavio. Yeah, how, how can I get this uh, better? Okay, I'm zoomed in now. What you can do here is go to suite channel one calibration. And then it says linear or logarithmic. Well, we pick logarithmic, I think, because we have the logarithmic scale here. So log, and then it said, okay, put your 40 dB attenuator. So we're going to do that. Well, here I only have 30, but I have another one that is 10. So get the Put 
the thing. Put the other guy out. Put the other guy out. And let's see, we have uh, 0, 10, 20, 30. So we take the 30. Okay, switch on the tracking generator, and then we and then we push the button. Okay, sometimes it gives an error, and then it says I cannot communicate with uh, with the spectrum analyzer. But what you do then? Then you just wait ten seconds, and then you just put the button here for single, and then it just proceeds with uh, with the calibration. First, can I look at the result? Well, as you can see, it is not that straight. And that could be the tracking generator or that could be the analyzer itself. But uh, yeah, because we're just going to try to normalize that. So now it says you need to get your uh, zero dB. So that is a short circuit, yes, but as we did. So we're gonna do that again. So I'm just going to short it. I'm taking out a 10 dB and a 30 dB. Shorting it. Okay, you click on OK. And it will go again. Okay, as you can see, it normalized already. So do you want to save the data? Yes. Uh, what is your uh, name for it? Well, it's good enough. I just call it Tony2. I save it. And here you have the normalized graph. You can switch this on and off. You have here the, the mat correction channel one. So if I switch it off, you are back as what it was, and here it is corrected. And as you can see, that looks a lot uh, better. So any measurements you do now will be, yeah, mathematically corrected, slash normalized. The only thing you need to think about is when you close the program and you start it again. It does forget, so you need to go to back to sweep, select channel one, you select your Tony 2 or whatever name you gave it, and then it is back. So you need to really load again the normalization. If you go into check filters, it is probably to best to measure including all your cables. Um, with and without the filter, but including all your cables, so then you really do a proper uh, normalize. So it is possible to normalize slash uh, calibrate it. It is, of course, with the calculation, but I think in uh, real spectrum analysis that would exactly be the same. Um, if you do this with, with to adjust filters, uh, if you do the zero dB normalization, do it with the same cables you are going to use on the on the filter so that you really uh, normalize it uh, as best as possible. So I hope that helped and uh, go to the next one. Okay, I prepared uh, something and broke off of my lap. Um, yeah, we have the Victor or East tester and we have USB connector and here we have the RS232. We're gonna try to connect, and I already saw in the software it wants a normal COM port. So we have, uh, we can try two ways. I can do it with the serial cable, uh, D9, I have that. This is a straight cable, and we have the USB, but with the USB we probably need the driver. And then in the end the software just wants a standard serial, so then it's converted back. Uh, so I try without the driver, but maybe I try both. And maybe if I need the null modem, I have here a little cross adapter. 
So uh, if the cable doesn't work, I just cross it and we see if it works then. So we have uh, a few possibilities to try. And let me uh, show you a little bit the software. Okay, let's have a look. I got the software here, LCR meters, Raishui. I will zoom in a little bit. And uh, oh, the zip file contains the USB driver. And the USB driver is a 64 bits and a 32, but we are connecting first with a standard serial cable. <clears throat> so I don't expect that we need a driver. Here is the program. Okay. No. And here it is. It says COM1. So well, let's close the program again. Close and connect the cable first. Well, this is my COM1. It is a uh, through a switch, but disconnected. Here we have the back of the of the LCR meter. We use the bottom one because the the upper is the handler. I do not exactly know what it is, but the bottom one is the serial. So let's start with that. The device is switched on. I will start the application. Here we have it. We can here select the COM port. Well, COM is my real COM. COM3 is my USB COM port for the spectrum analyzer. So I need to get one and I do connect. And it works. <laughs> so that wasn't so hard. So yeah, it just needs a serial connection. And uh, then you see exactly what you see on the screen, only a lot bigger. So that is cool. You have yeah, easy access buttons. This, I don't know what it is. <laughs> cool. Well, as you can see, even though the software is from uh, East Tester, it does recognize the Rosui the vector. So that is nice. And uh, yeah, well, I trust it will do exactly the same as you see on the screen. So uh, I will now test uh, the USB connection. So uh, what I usually do, I open the device manager, manage device manager, then you go to ports and then you check here if a port is added when you plug in the cable and then you know that you maybe don't need a driver. So I will now put my device Joop, and there it is and it created COM5. So now we know, okay, we don't need to install any drivers. So I'm zooming in, as you can see, this is my COM1, this is my real COM port, this is my COM3, it's a spectrum analyzer, and this is the virtual COM6 that is just created by plugging in the device. And indeed, uh, if it does not work by plugging in, then you need to use the driver, but I didn't, and it works all. So let's see if it wants to connect. Yes, there it is. It is really smooth. And this is a uh, Windows 10 latest version. Uh, all, all updates are on and it's the 64 bit uh, version. So it's yeah, nothing special in that sense. So well done, uh, East Tester and uh, Victor Rosui. It uh, works very nice. So, uh, I hope that uh, that helped for you to try. I just used the serial cable straight. If you you use the old-fashioned D9 uh, serial cable, no no cross cable, 
no no modem nothing just a straight one and for the usb i just plugged it in windows install automatically the driver but uh, if if you are looking in your device manager and you don't see the the serial port uh, coming then you just uh, install the driver first and i i couldn't try that because it automatically installed already so uh, well i hope that worked the next question that was from richard and it was of the the wbsg1 uh, the frequency steps so richard we're gonna try that now okay i have a little setup uh use the signal generator on top here the wbsg1 i'm using channel one with the bnc i'm now in 100 megahertz and it goes to my frequency counter here and well it's all in the it's uh, they are both connected to the reference so you, as you can see the 100 is exactly 100 oh, that's always nice to see and richard says let me see the message i've been having trouble getting the signal generator to the exact frequency this is mainly on channel one i've tried for example 14640 which is a common frequency repeater and uh, the signal generator goes to a value close by and then stays stuck unless i make a larger frequency change so it seems that he cannot um, do very precise steps and on channel two the problem does not exist so let's see if we can do that so we put 146 640 let's zoom in on the display okay that is not working okay i zoom in now on the generator i think if i make it very dark let me see yes we can see exactly what we are doing so let me try so what i do i just have here my cursor buttons for left and right and up and down so i go first to the one and then we want four six six forty yeah, as you can see it just works and i can even do one or two or if we want to do something here but maybe the construction of the buttons is uh, is a little bit weird because it would be easy if it's really in a, in a star but if, if you look to the arrows then it's really stepping and then it's up and completely down button down up so uh yeah i cannot reproduce your your problem but i hope uh, it helps anyway so that's it for today uh, thank you very much for your questions that was really nice and i'm also trying things that i didn't try yet so that was really nice so otavio thank you very much it was very nice to to see how the normally uh, the calibration and the normalize uh, option works with the traction generator and the frequency counter so that was cool and uh, being top uh, very cool with the serial connection and thank you for for sending me the software or the link to the software so um, let me know if i can uh, pack it in a zip and put it for download for the others and uh, i hope it uh, it solved your connection problem if you uh, follow my steps and uh, richard i'm sorry i couldn't reproduce your uh, your problem but uh, maybe it was uh, the buttons so uh, yeah, have, have, have a good look when I uh, zoom in and maybe that helps. So, uh, and uh, oh yeah, and the other question uh, from uh, Topknot, uh, it will be uh, next time. So uh, thank you all for watching and hope to see you next time.